Hey everyone and welcome to Young News. Today we're talking the MBTI stereotypes beginning with the ENTJ personality type. <music> ENTJs, they are inevitable. Nothing is going to stop the onslaught of ENTJs. The world is simply one big contest of the lord of the hill, the king of the hill. And one ENTJ is ultimately going to be left standing, the richest man on earth, the most powerful man of earth, president of the world, Mr. ENTJ. The question is, who is it going to be? Is it going to be one of you guys watching right now? I wonder. ENTJs are one of the few types to self-admit to being a psychopath. Only an ENTJ might say of themselves that they are psychopaths with a smile. Only an ENTJ might delude themselves that they completely lack any kind of emotional or empathetic reflex. ENTJs are people that use and rely on raw strength and initiative and cunning to advance and resolve the emotional traumas they faced growing up. ENTJs don't believe in negative thinking. There is nothing bad or wrong with them. Everything about them is awesome. In a way, ENTJs are people that start out life as often soft, mushy things. And these ENTJs, they often grow up feeling constantly rejected by other people. As they get rejected, they transform into hard, unfeeling robots piloted by soft mushiness. Don't be surprised as they get older many ENTJs start getting increasingly sentimental. They start re-evaluating their life. They become reformed good guys. People that in contact with power and authority and success realize I don't need to keep all of this to myself. I can share this with other people. ENTJs have something very inspiring about them. I had one ENTJ friend in my life and she would always say, don't be hard on yourself. Other people will be hard on you for you. What she meant with this is there is no point in self-criticism or self-doubt. Why should you take any time to doubt or second guess yourself? Why not just keep going? Why not just believe in yourself? And why not leave the criticism and doubt to the people around you? Often I think ENTJs experience a lot of rejection growing up because they are so confident. They are so confident, they are so self-accepting, so forgiving. And other people feel because of this that they have to be extra harsh, extra critical, extra tough on the ENTJ personality type. People around the ENTJ feel this person is too confident for their own good and they need to be pegged down a bit. They need to be trimmed. They need to be put in the corner. They need to be put on the spot. Other people constantly feel a need to show up on you. Other people constantly feel a need to get down on you. Other people constantly feel a need to criticize you. When you're an ENTJ, it's simply because of your personality. You're so strong-minded, so willful, so sure of what you want, so passionate in going for and advancing your vision that other people, they simply worry about you. And in some ways, in some twisted ways, what they do to you is just a reflection of their love for you and their fear and worry for you. Of course, um, you could see that people are simply preparing you for the real world. They're preparing you for the fact that things are going to be tough. If you believe in yourself, if you have a high standard for yourself, if you set high and strong goals for yourself, and if you work hard towards these goals, life is going to put a lot of challenges for you. A person that simply goes with the flow and does whatever feels best in a situation, a person who adjusts to the social feedback around them, blending in, fitting in with other people, not making themselves out to be anything special, this sort of person is probably not going to face a lot of hardships. 
But a person who constantly tells themselves they can do better, they can achieve more, they can go further, is going to constantly have to struggle. And that's just the truth, and this is also true for the ENTJ personality type. Recent news show that ENTJs are the most rare person, the most rare personality type on the planet. Yes, contrary to popular belief, ENTJs are even more rare than INFJs, previously believed to be the most rare personality type. ENTJs make out about a percentage of the world's global population. And that's according to recent statistics. Now you can dispute statistics. I personally don't believe in any form of statistic, but these statistics don't exist in a vacuum. There is some level of truth to it. ENTJs are not a common type. And so a lot of ENTJs are going to feel weird or different than other people. I think while ENTJs tend to be 90% push, push, push people, a lot of the time there is a backswing of self-doubt. There is a backswing of self-doubt. While constantly, most of the time, the ENTJ will believe in themselves, there are times when they are going to feel envious of other people or weak or unfairly treated. ENTJs, they have a strong sense of fairness and sometimes during the dark days, during times of stress, they tend to feel unfairly treated. Yeah, a lot of time ENTJs feel that they are not held to the same standard as other people. Other people can advance by doing less. Other people can go ahead simply because they can sweet talk or manipulate or uh, just charm their way forward. You, as an ENTJ, are going to have to work for it, while other people around you are simply going to get ahead simply because they are more good looking or have better PR. And that's really annoying. While most personality types are simply B rank humans, ENTJs are definitely A-rank humans, A-level humans, people that don't need PR but can simply push their way forward in life. Somebody who doesn't need pity, somebody who doesn't need other people to help or support them. The ENTJ is going to get there no matter what, no matter who is on their side, no matter what support they have. They are going to get there without diplomacy or fancy words. The more you try to sweet talk an ENTJ, the more likely that they're going to want to steal your lunch money. If they feel that you are trying to play underhanded with them, if you believe that they are simply trying to suck up to you, you're going to like them less. You prefer people that are straight and honest with you, people that can be real with you, people that can be mean to you as much as they can be nice to you. ENTJs in love are also really funny people. ENTJs don't say, oh, I like this person. Instead they say, oh, I'm starting to develop a weakness for this person. However, ENTJs, they accept their darkness just as much as their light. They frown, they get annoyed, and they convince themselves that they are being 100% rational. I'm only talking to this person because they might aid me in my business. I only spend time with this person or invest energy or support to this person because I believe I will get something for it. I think a lot of time ENTJs are simply unwilling to admit to doing anything out of love or kindness, and so they try their very, very best to make everyone believe that they are acting 100% rational. They try to create win-win relationships. They try to make a love relationship into a business relationship or a success relationship or a success pairing. A lot of the time I see ENTJs go into these power pairings, often supporting their partner or working with their partner, making their partner into a project that will help them in their ambitions and in their success. Of course, if love wasn't there, they would simply not care. They would simply do things on their own. But because love is there, and because they do really do care, they will keep working with this person as a tag team, no matter how difficult that person is. 
if an ENTJ didn't like you, they wouldn't even bother to give you the time. It's ENTJ to say I love you so I'm going to put 1 million on your bank account, spend it on whatever you like. Often whenever they've had an argument with you they'll buy you something nice afterwards to make up for what they said. But they don't like to apologize. For people to say they don't care about others they sure spend a lot of time and money on other people. The thing is, what I find is, they'll invest in a person, they'll build you up, they'll give you resources, they'll give you tools to succeed, they'll give you access to their contact networks, and they'll give you authority, they'll let you make decisions about things that they would normally seek to decide for themselves. They'll challenge you, and they'll argue with you, and they'll test your wit because they will want to use your insight and your intelligence to their advantage. And that was also what attracted them to you. As an ENTJ gets older, like I said, they get increasingly sentimental. So what will happen is they'll start to revisit childhood memories you had together, or things you did the time you first met. What you might remember as them screaming or being mean, they will remember as their first love spat they had with you. What you might remember as a really difficult or annoying or difficult situation you were in or a trauma, they'll remember as roses and rainbows and things that meant something and got you together and built up your friendship and your bond. When they think back to, when you think back to a big argument you had, they'll think back to how beautiful your eyes were and how you sparkled while you were discussing with them in the heat of the situation. In the end, it was inevitable that the two of you would start dating and end up married. When an ENTJ decides they want something, they'll always get it. ENTJs are simply inevitable and, in the end, ENTJs are going to come out on top of this race of humanity. <laughs> and uh, in that sense, ENTJs are inevitable. So okay, this was my ENTJ stereotypes video. Now I command you to like this video, to share it with your friends and the people around you. If you don't leave a positive comment on this video, I will come and visit you and drag you to the keyboard and make you write it. That's it, thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.